Hello and welcome back and come join me behind the curtain a little bit here on the YouTube channel. Let's discuss something. I talk about network attached storage all the time and I have to accept it's a pretty niche topic. This isn't a YouTube channel that talks about gaming or gaming rigs and therefore it's never really going to break into the mainstream. Therefore, whenever I see a NAS solution that changes and breaks the mold and arguably is one of the more interesting, more mainstream appealing devices in the market, I'll be straight with you, I get enthusiastic. And that's what brings me to today's video. This is the Station PC, a rather forgettable name. Um, it's coming from a brand called Firefly who produce different network attached storage solutions, motherboards and more. And this is their portable NAS solution. It's a pocket NAS drive. It arrives soon on crowdfunding over on Kickstarter and it's... I'll be honest, I didn't know it was going to do that. It's arriving on Kickstarter starting at $199 and it's a very unique kind of NAS solution. Now, most network attached storage devices that we talked about on the channel fall into a fairly similar bracket. It's a network attached storage server that's in your home or, or your office and you can access it locally on your uh, network environment via a laptop, a tablet, a phone, a PC, whatever. But you can also access it remotely by using relay points. Now, as good as that sounds, a lot of the people that I've spoken to are particularly photo video editors more than anyone else who end up very, very far away from their NAS encounter a problem. And that problem is that when they're doing a shoot and they've generated say 50, 100 gig, 200 gig of a raw photo or raw video data, they need to upload that to their NAS remotely, which is quite a lot of data depending on the internet service provider in that local area environment. The alternative is they take that data and then stick it in their bag on a USB drive, which isn't quite apple side because then the data is all in one place. This device is trying to find a middle ground. What happens is you have the device in your home or office like this, and then when you're ready to go, you take the device with you. This device has got a battery inside it and is a network attached storage device. It has its own Wi-Fi connection. It can also be connected to via Bluetooth. It can also be connected directly, USB cable directly to a PC. It has a mobile client app and a desktop client app, and it can connect to the Wi-Fi environment if you want wherever you end up. So what you do is you take this in the back of your bag, you go and do your shoot, and then you send the data to it. And because it's using a local area network connection rather than a remote access, more than likely it'll be faster than the internet service provider in your environment, or you can directly connect as mentioned. And then you can use the software that's with it to upload it to the cloud. You can upload it to a Google Drive. You can upload it to a remote NAS if you choose. But moreover, you can remotely connect to another one of these devices over here and then send the data. Ultimately, it means that you are finding portable data. I'm, I was ready for it that time. You can have portable data in your bag and the means to send it to two or three different access points. But it doesn't stop there. This device arrives with both a USB port there and an SD 3.0 memory card slot there as well. This front mounted panel, by the way, gives real time information about the device when in use. You can engage an automated backup, an automated one click backup, if you choose to, via the connected USB drive, and it has a 32 milliamp battery inside. That means it can even be utilized for six hours continuously, or it can apparently, I've not tested this, uh, last for up to 20 days in idle when you need it there. And it charges once you connect it into the docking station via a 16 pin connection there, inside both the docking station and in this. But you can also charge it via standard USB Type-C if you need. And again, it has an inbuilt fan inside. And although it has by default a 32 gig storage module inside that houses the operating system, the system also arrives with a M.2 NVMe slot. Removing the two screws at the top reveals to us there inside 
that active cooling fan that's operating right now to keep the CPU inside. That's a quad-core ARM Cortex-A55 processor, which has ARM-based graphics and has a one tera operations per second MPU for dealing with the AI operations that I'll talk about later on. Here is our M.2 NVMe, a 2280 length one inside, and the battery section is removable. So you can take additional batteries just in case you need it for extended periods. Now, you can install a 4TB M2 NVMe inside here. I don't know if it does support 8TB, even if they say it does. I don't have an 8TB currently in the studio to test, but I have tested a 4TB and it went in like a charm. It also arrives with two gig of DDR4 memory as well. You can't upgrade it, but still a quad core ARM processor means that this is not going to be a hugely power consuming device, which is why that battery will probably last as long as it does. Now, you may have noticed there's only one M.2 NVMe slot inside this device. That's one of the things I'm not overly keen on. If I was utilizing this, off-site and I was doing a really important one-of-a-kind shoot, if I am transferring data to this, there is that window of opportunity where that drive could fail. When I'm uploading to the cloud, when I'm connecting to a USB drive, if I'm backing up from an SD card, <clears throat> there is the opportunity where that drive might fail. Now, yes, you might still have the data on the camera or the device you used, but nonetheless, I wish this had two M.2 NVMe slots, and then I could have had a RAID 1 to ensure I had that safety net. Nonetheless, the fact that even on its own, without the docking station, you can still utilize it for a multi-tier backup. The software allows you to navigate backing up to a few different cloud platforms and have semi-automated or fully automated backup to the USB as mentioned. And don't overlook that USB mode that will allow you to directly connect to this device point to point with USB for an even faster backup on five gigabits per second USB there. When you do have the device in your bag, you can connect to it with Wi-Fi 6 and you can use a five gigahertz, 160 megahertz um, packet exchange to get up to 1.2 gigahertz there. Now the SSD inside is running on a Gen 3 times one lane, which is a gigabit potential performance. But I will also highlight, notwithstanding that it is an ARM-based processor which will bring down the performance a little bit, it is still in early development. And when I was doing some transfers and doing speed testing on the LAN, I never really got it beyond 200 to 300 megabits or 20 to 30 megabytes. Now the brand has told me they are still optimizing that performance and are gonna get more out of it. But at least now, I wasn't really be able to get much more speed than that and would still rely on direct USB connection for the fastest backups, at least in this version that I've got. But while we're talking about this unit itself, let's talk a little bit about that docking station. What exactly makes this thing tick or makes it actually that interesting? Now, notwithstanding, once you do connect the device into that available slot, it will reconnect with that 16 pin setup and begin powering the device. It also acts, by the way, as a means of communication and data transference. Now, on one side, we have an additional USB type A port, which allows you to connect an additional USB drive to make that file accessible or to back up the contents of the NAS onto another tier of backup operation. On the other side, we've got an additional USB-C, which supplies power to the device and obviously charging the dock when it's connected, but there's also there a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. That's right, you can access the contents of this over a 2.5 gig network connection. That's around 269 to 279 megabytes per second if you really power things up. But what's really impressive is this base level panel here at the bottom is metal. Why does it need to be metal? And by the way, it holds the screwdriver. It's because there is another slot for an M.2 NVMe in here, which means you have now got, once you connect it, the option to empty the contents of this drive onto here. This allows you to create a very active and multi-tiered backup operation, both when you're on the go with the multiple tiers we discussed and locally in the local network environment, allowing you to apparently down the line as they scale out the backup software, as they go through crowdfunding, to allow you to back up the contents of this onto a surrounding NAS, but also back it up onto the cloud as well via the network and out there into the internet. So again, it's a very unusual, unique solution that is trying to fill the void and the gap between network attached storage backups and direct attached storage backups there. 
Now, all of that hardware ain't gonna mean toss if the software is no good. Now, I will say that the client software that I utilize both on the PC that I use and on my Android mobile phone, it's good, but it's definitely not finished yet. Now, as this is a product that's going into crowdfunding and therefore development can occasionally not be completed yet, I will say I'm not hugely surprised and I'm not gonna be overly critical about that software given that this is still a product intended for crowdfunding. But the software itself uh, has a very easy to use phone backup service. And again, depending on iOS or Android, there are applications. It also supports numerous file protocols, um, Samba or SMB, FTP and remote access protocol relaying from the brand's own server. Although how many of you are gonna do that on a relatively or comparatively unknown brand for a number of you? That's really up to you. Um, you can utilize AI photo recognition for facial recognition as well as object recognition and therefore use those parameters and those automated tags thanks to the, uh, the MP, NT, uh, sorry, MPU on that CPU to archive all of your photos. And again, you can synchronize and back up in either direction with Google Drive as well and Google Photos at least in one direction. There's a multimedia application that allows you to utilize this and stream over DLNA and UPnP. So if you're on traveling around and all of your multimedia, all of your movies are inside this, you can stream it to a local TV. Sadly, there isn't an HDMI output, which I really would have liked to have seen in order to, for example, if you're staying in a hotel overnight while off site, the fact that I could have connected to this directly and watch TV, I can't do it directly. It has to be done over the LAN. And all the while, I found the mobile application to be incredibly responsive and intuitive. Now, the desktop client application, Still, uh, the language integration wasn't quite complete. I've tested several versions as the desktop client has had uh, multiple updates and uh, language integrations improvements have occurred during that time, but it's still not perfect for me. Now, file management there, backup operations, multi-site backup operations are all pretty darn good. User account creation is there. I wasn't able to find any option to enable two-factor authentication, something I'm not overly fond of. And I will say that there is the potential for if you lose this, someone connecting to it directly with the USB in the right mode, I would have liked to have seen some kind of additional authentication or at least password restriction to allow me to get into it. But perhaps the brand tells me if enough users want that and it's in their feedback, they will integrate it into the software. And as mentioned, as this makes its way onto crowdfunding, the pricing structure for early access backers is going to be cheaper. Keep in mind, number one, you are paying less because you're kind of slightly being a guinea pig, so keep that in mind. But two, the money saving you will make, although very, very good, keep in mind you are still using crowdfunding. And therefore, you should never look at a device like this going into crowdfunding, the same as traditional retail. All that said, I visited the brand when they were at CES and I saw this device in its early phases. The brand is legitimate, it has a bunch of products on show and it had some unique products in-house IP. So at the very least, I know they are a real company that are putting real money into this. On top of that, as you may have seen on the table, there's a whole host of retail accessories from hard shell cases when you'd carry on the transit and a rubberized case that you can use on this device, slip in your device and boom, you've got that rubberized protection there. They've really gone out of their way on this device with the accessory kits, first time setup guides that are genuinely nicely done. You know, this feels like a legitimate product. It's still nonetheless crowdfunding, but I'm not gonna say that this seems by a fly-by-night product here. And the introductory price of 199 for the unit on its own and 289 if you want the whole thing together as a kit, 300 nicker for this, for what it can do, is pretty darn good. I do want it to improve a lot of that performance mentioned earlier on. I would like to see a few more applications, certainly, or at least uh, the ability to add something like Docker so I can use more composite DIY stuff or maybe even something like Plex installation. But nonetheless, I like what I'm seeing here. And in a market that's got so many solutions that are basically cookie cutter, this is a very, very unique device. I'm not overly keen on the name, Station PC sounds generic as F for such a unique product, but I like this and I do think 
at least for a while, I'm probably going to integrate this into a lot of my travels. Maybe I'll have it all on me when I go to Computex. If you see me there, let me know and I'll let you know if it's in my bag. But right now, I want to see more solutions like this because it breaks the mold and it allows people to understand a little bit better just what they can do with their data and the convenience of multi-tier backups. I wish this bloody thing had more than one M.2 NVMe slot. I wish the system, at the very least, had a little bit more storage capability and the lack of RAID or the lack of expandability other than using USB drives does bug me a little bit, but the software feels well put together in the early phases. And for the price they're asking for in the early access pricing, I think it's pretty good for that. When it reaches full retail, I think they have to do more. But at least for now, if you're looking at this and wondering about this for crowdfunding, there's a lot to like here. But let me know what you guys think. That's what the comments below are for. I'm gonna keep an eye on this device. And if there's some significant software updates, I might do a follow-up video to this one. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If it is live, I'll add some links in the description so you can check this out for yourself and maybe speak to the organization themselves to see what their plans are on a roadmap. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.